praise this day. We give you honor. We give you glory, Lord. We come before your presence, God, recognizing that you are God and that you are in control of all things. We speak well of you, God. Hallelujah. And we just ask you today that you would have your way, God. Have your way as we get ready to go forth, God, and our prophetess Kara begins to declare the word of the Lord. Father, as we pray today, we rebuke and bind the powers of darkness. We tear down every stronghold of power and principalities that would dare to have the audacity to try to come in and interrupt. We take authority over the airways now in the name of Jesus. Father, we draw the bloodline in the room of the spirit, God. Hallelujah. And we loose warring angels, God, that we begin to move, God. Hallelujah. And that you would get the glory, God, as the word of the Lord goes forth. Father, we thank you for the anointing that destroys every yoke, God. We thank you for the power that is in your word, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we honor you because you're awesome, God. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to touch the hearts of the people that are going to hear. Anoint their ears, God. In the name of Jesus, lift them up in the rim of the Spirit, God, where they will be able to receive everything that is done today. God, we thank you for Gem Ministries, God. We thank you for those that are going to be converted. We thank you for those that are going to be strengthened. We thank you for the breakthrough that destroys every yoke, God. In the name of Jesus. And God, we give you glory in my shade. And we thank you in my caution that you are moving, God. That you are even moving able kosha. And you are breaking down walls and barriers, God. And you are destroying everything that is not conducive for the flow, for the move, for the power, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God, to begin to move, God. God, we thank you, God, that there is a shifting, God. Hallelujah. And there is a power that's being released, God. Hallelujah. That the enemy cannot withstand. We thank you, God, of our shape. That you, God, are loosening shackles and you're breaking chains and you're tearing down strongholds. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise, we give you the glory and the honor, God. We thank you, God, for this day, God. A day of experience, a day of breakthrough, a day of power, God. A day of shifting, a day, God, ever call, when the enemy will recognize that he does not have the power or the authority to even interrupt or disturb anything, God, that is going to be said, God. For Father, as I pray, I declare, God, God, that there is a miscarrying womb that has been sent into the camp of the enemy and that the spirit of abortion has stopped the plan of the enemy now. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We worship you. We honor you, Lord. You are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of the honor. There's nobody like you, God. You have ordained it, so we say thank you. So we give you glory. So we give you honor. We bless you, God, for being such an awesome God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen.
word of the Lord is God has placed us in the operating room the operating room is a designated place it is, it is a place of, of sanctuary it's a place where surgical procedures are performed the operating place is a sanctified place. It's a clean place. It's an isolated place. And the only only people in the place are those that are being um, that are being performed on and those that are performing. And the word of the Lord is that, that many of us in this house have been placed in the operating room. And the reason we have been placed in the operating room is because spiritual surgery is being performed. Hey, God, you're about kosha. See, this, oh my God. The spiritual surgery is a procedure. And surgery itself is a treatment of injuries or disorders of the body. And it's an incision that takes place with instruments. And the purpose of it is to repair, to remove, and to replace. We are in the spiritual operating room. <laughs> And God said, there has been some damage to my people in my house. And there are parts of life that have been damaged. And he said, I'm taking you into a place where it seems like you're all alone. But I, the surgeon, am there with you. And I am performing in you with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That is my surgical instrument that is performing within you. Oh, God. He said, in this day, in this time, we are in a place and time where the warfare that we are experiencing is psychological. Psychological warfare. The word psyche means the soul. Psyche is soul. Logi comes from study. The study of the soul. For the soul is the intent of man. It is the essence of our being that belongs to God. So Satan is fighting to damage that part that belongs to God. Psychological. He said the psychological is, is an effect. It's a mental effect. When we talk about psychological, it has a mental effect on what the expectation of something. So the psychological warfare that we are experiencing is that enemy has designed very specific weapons to cause trauma to our very soul so that we are walking around wounded. And the Bible says the wounded spirit, who can bear? God said that we are in psychological warfare. But he said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. So the pulling down of strong holes. The enemy is trying to hold on to a part of your soul, a part of your mind, a part of your intellect, a part of your thought process that does not belong to him. Huh. Huh. What does psychological warfare do? Psychological warfare causes psychological trauma. Huh. And psychological trauma is a, a psychological response to a deeply distressing or disturbing
centuries of war. It does not make us only wounded soldiers, but the word of God says that we are victorious people. <laughs> God said we're joint heirs with Christ. Like Minister Down the Preach, we operate from an ascended place. We are not, we are not broke down and disgusted, but we are victorious through Christ Jesus. We are joined to Christ. Don't the work for Calvary. Don't the power of the Holy Spirit. But what the enemy is after, he causes psychological trauma to affect your very soul, mind, and intellect. The part of God that belongs to, I mean, a part of us that belongs to God. And it twists our perception and it causes us to have the wrong image. Why is this important? Why is, why, what's the purpose of psychological warfare? Because we're at war. And the enemy desires to sift us as weak. He desires to steal, kill, and destroy. And what he's doing is he is infiltrating our mind with images. But the word of God said that we were formed and created in the image of who? God. Oh. Oh, do you really believe that? Do we really believe that? Do we believe that we are created in the image of God? Do we believe that we're joint heirs with Christ? I know that when I experience trauma, I don't always believe that. Uh -huh, my vision gets fractured, and I can't see. And the only image I can see uh, uh, is one where I'm defeated, one where I'm broke, one where my cars get towed, one where my kids are going all kinds of ways, one where I don't have enough money. Oh, well, come on here. Somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. One where my body's hurting, one where my mind is flooded, one where I'm too busy. And that is the only Psychological 
through trauma, damage, hurt, pain, causes us to see one another as enemies instead of a body fitly joined together. Psychological trauma causes us to isolate and think, I don't want nobody to know my business. But when you're in a prophetic household, honey, the prophets know your business. The prophets that see you where you are, they know about your fornication. They know about your adultery. They know about your drinking. They know about your lying. And they're interceding in the spirit and praying for you and not judging you, but crying aloud. And I hush up the other one. Hey, the devil is a liar. We expose the eye. No more eye, but we, 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 we are conquerors. It's psychological warfare. It's warfare that, so I didn't want to share this, but last night, God brought this to my remembrance. And I'm a mess in need of repentance every day. No secret. But God brought it to my remembrance and almost everybody except for the visitors maybe one or two people have either gotten a gift from me something I made something I gave them a kind text or something not them and their kids and God said why do you think you like that and you know what he showed me he showed me the woman of God we are to be like our pastor that means you don't only check on pastor you don't only buy things for pastor you don't only celebrate pastor but we celebrate one another we need one another we are a body i can't function without my knee and my arm i i i get to go we cast it down in the name of jesus we are a body. We are a body. There's a reason we've been designated under a leader with a heart that will give you her last. Yes, yes. We are to give one another. Yeah. We are to carry one another's burdens. We are to bear the infirmities of the weak. But we all are I, I, I. Because if I am nice to pastor and I give pastor what she wants and I call a pastor, then. I might get a promotion. I might might get recognized. I might get a title. But those of you who know me, and trust me, I don't got it all together. But those of you who know me know that I joke. Call me servant or ambassador. (laughs) Because it's not about a title. We are a nation. We are a people. We are mighty through God. As we all come into our place and comfort one another, the enemy will not be able to isolate some of us to the point where he's destroying the mentality and the encouragement and the covenant discouragement and they're hiding in the home alone. And we are not reaching out and joining to one another because we didn't cast down the ignorance. You are making a place. You are teaching in here at the moment of God. Teaching in here. Let me let me get Julio or somebody. Oh God, you can hear that. This is what God showed me. He said <laughs> the word of God is quick, right? Power. This is my kitchen knife sword. <laughs> Y'all work with me, and it's piercing to the dividing asunder of bone. And now, so God said, some of us have learned how to allow the word to cut past our flesh into our bone. That means the things we used to do, we don't do no more. We've allowed some of the works of the flesh to be destroyed by the word of the power of God. We've been delivered and set free. No longer in bondage. Because the word has pierced to the divided and stepped up bone and marrow. But then he said, it pierced through bone and marrow to the divided and up of soul and spirit. So the soul, and I don't have time to get into it the way I want to, but the soul and the spirit are intertwined as believers. Because we've been born and we've been, God breathed into Adam and made him a living soul. And the Holy Spirit comes upon us and it intertwines with our soul to help our mind and our intellect line up with the word of God. And to operate according to what the Holy Spirit reveals to us. And we are born intertwined with soul and spirit. And the word, what it does is it, it pierces to the divine acceptor of 
soul, and spirit. <laughs> so what does that mean? That means some of us have been working in the works of the Holy Spirit. We've been preaching. We've been prophesying. We've been used once or twice to do a miracle. We've been doing this and doing that. And we've manifested the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we've been able to give a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, a word of prophecy. And we've been able to function in the Spirit with our soul intertwined. But God said, Come on, break it down. Where he's at now is he has to get to the heart. Oh, yes, sir. Discernment, a word has to pierce. My God. And that's how it is. It's hard to get to the heart. Because there's some hard hearted hearts. There's some psychological yes. trauma that has caused our heart to be broken. There's some abandonment, disappointment, and rejection that has caused us to build a fortress around our heart. And we think because we worship God, because we praise God, we got it. But God said, not so, not so. Because I need to pierce in your heart to discern hey, the thoughts and your intent. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. It will tell us that we're okay. It will tell us that we're right. It will tell us that we have faith when we don't. It will tell us things that are not true because our emotions are so strong that they overpower and our soul is so strong that it overpowers. And unless we yield to the spirit, we can't discern the thoughts and the intent of the heart. God said, I want to pierce the heart. I'm taking you into the operating room. I'm taking you through a surgical procedure where you can begin to ask God, why do I do that? Oh. Why am I like that? Because there was a fake image that came up because of situation and circumstances. Moses could have thought that he was just a child of Pharaoh. There was an image of Moses adopted as a child of Pharaoh. But God's purpose said, no, you're a deliverer of my people. Oh, my God. The image has to be cut down. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to tell you one thing. Psychological trauma in the word of God. I want to tell you all about some people that experience psychological trauma. I'm going to go all the way back to Genesis. Everybody talks about <coughs> Cain and Abel. And some might say, well, it was Abel that had the psychological trauma. But the reality is that Abel was dead. The trauma was on Adam and Eve. <laughs> Adam and Eve. Adam who was formed by God. Eve who was built up from the rib of God. Who everything was provided for them. Everything was given to them. And they came and they disobeyed God. And they got exposed. Um, ex expelled from the, from the Garden of Eden, now they have children. And as a result of what child sin, both sons are lost. Psychological trauma, devastation. Can you imagine the pain of two parents losing, losing both sons, one to murder, the other one to being cast out? Can you imagine? But the Bible says their response to psychological trauma was Adam knew his wife and conceived and brought forth a Seth. <laughs> Jesus. Out of Seth came the godly line. Out of Seth came the rebuilding of a nation. Out of Seth came and, and God and Adam Eve named to Seth because she said, I have got a replacement from the Lord. God said, there's some things that you have lost. And you're waiting to get it back. But God said, I ain't giving it back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace. Hush your book. Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to replace. And from that replacement, there will be a godly, a godly inheritance. A godly line. The birth of a godly nation. Let's talk about trauma. And I'm almost done. Huh. In the Bible. In the Bible. Come on, let's get out of prayer. Hey, psychological trauma. I have to do this. Pastor brought her up. Oh, two, two of them. I got two more examples, y'all. 
Israel is Absalom, Tamar, and Amnon. Some would say there was this was a devastation where a brother rapes his own sister. And the father does nothing. So the psychological trauma is one in which Absalom's heart was filled with hate. Let me stop for a moment. There's some of us in here who have been done wrong and have not got justice. It's been unjust what has happened to us. It's been unfair and we're harboring hate in our heart. Jesus. Jesus. So Absalom's response to psychological trauma was to have hate in his heart to the point where he developed a plan to get Amnon to come to his house and he killed Amnon. And I want you to go ahead and read what happened that happens to Absalom because that was a domino effect that ultimately led to Absalom hanging the tree dead by his hair. Yes, right. Psychological trauma. Yes. Where did it start? Did it start? From hate, hate. From injustice. Yes. From not seeking God to vengeance. God said, vengeance is mine, right, say of the Lord. Right. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Give it to God. Give it to God. Don't let that be the image that you see. Everybody's not out to hurt you. Everybody don't want to take what you got. Reach care up. Some people don't even want what they got. But Absalom responded with psychological drama with hate. And Tamar, Tamar used to have a ministry called Tamar because Tamar means palm tree. And if you know about a palm tree with a fierce wind blow, the palm tree traditionally does not break. But it's been built and it's designed to be able to bend to the lowest possible point and still come right back up, still standing. But Tamar in this instance, she was raped. Not only was she raped, but her brother hated her after he took what was precious from her and he threw her out. Raped. And the Bible says Tamar hid in the house of her brother. <sighs> Some of us are hiding in the house. Some of us have hidden in a place that we deem safe. But we don't know our very protector is filled with hate. We are shukum de We don't know that God is a God of justice. We don't know how to step out and trust God. And God said the wrong psychological response to, to um, that. Tamar's response that was wrong was that she hid in the house. So I say to you under the sound of my voice who are hiding, come out! Come out! Come out! Break through! Break out! Come forth! God has need of you. God has need of you, son and daughter of Zion. Hush your baby. He laid on her lap and he died. Uh -huh. yes, 
this Shunammite woman said, get my horses, because I'm going to the man of God. And she got on her horses, and they asked her, what's going on? And she said, it shall be well. She told him, drive and go forth. And she went to Mount Carmel to where Elisha was. And Elisha saw her from afar off. And he said, something is wrong. But the Lord hasn't told me what's wrong. Don't think that your leaders are always going to know what's wrong with you. Jesus. People are not always going to know that something's wrong with you. Because we smile and we say, I love you. And I love the Lord. And we shake hands. And we post happy pictures. And we eat it chicken and ribs and we look it all good and sometimes people don't know what's wrong with you but the spirit of the Lord allowed him to go to the woman's house uh -huh. yeah. <sighs> My God. when he, when, this, when Gehazi asked her she said it is well her son was dead her promise was dead the thing that she prayed for was dead but she refused to walk around with the image of her dead son on her lap. She refused to hold on to the image of her dead son who she had laid on the bed of the prophet Elisha. She refused to hold on to the image of a dead son, but instead she decreed through words of faith, it is well. I challenge you today. Come on, come on. Think of your situation. Speak to your situation right now and say, it is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. My child will be saved. My husband will be saved. My wife will be saved. My household will be saved. I will walk in abundance. The Lord shall open a window of heaven and pour out a blessing. It is well. It is well. It is well. My body is well. My mind is well. My past will not overtake my presence. And cause me to trip in the future. It is well. Thank you, Jesus. It is she well. She said it is well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and read about it. Glory. Second Kings chapter glory four. Elisha uh, went in the well. house, and it, well. it wasn't an instantaneous process. On, he said he laid on. He walked around. He did a few things till finally the child coughed, uh -huh. and the child was alive. And some of us are giving up because it didn't happen the first time you asked. Because it only moved a little bit the second time we asked. But God said, it is well believing. For when I spoke to you, my promises are yea and amen. I will carry out that which was spoken. Every single one of, single one of my words will not return to be void. But, 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 I need you to give me your heart. I need you to yield. Ah. This is why yeah. the, the Spirit of God moved the way he moved this morning. Yeah. Ah, my God. The enemy is not playing. Ah. The image of the beast is real. real. And everybody pictures a wild animal. But there's this movie, and they, they tell you a lot of movies, where the man, <laughs> he has multiple personalities. And as a therapist, I can tell you how we address psychological trauma. One of the effects of psych psychological trauma is called an identity fracture, mm -hmm. where you become different people in different set mm -hmm. settings, and you disassociate, uh -huh. and you begin to not have an emotional response to things as a result of trauma. Yeah. <laughs> and what the enemy is trying to do is keep us traumatized to the point where we will be open to do whatever, wherever, with whoever, just to feel something. Just to satisfy self. And we will lift up the image of the beast. Mm. And self can just be, I want to lay here instead of praise the Lord. Self can be, I just want to sit down instead of jump up and clap my hands. Self can be from the smallest thing to the biggest thing. But that is the psychological warfare that the enemy is waging. He wants you to see the image. The image of self-satisfaction. Self-fulfillment. Self-actualization. Self-esteem. self Pride, but God is saying, Take pride in me, look to me, think well of me, let me be your identity, let me show you who you are. Let me tell you, this is my last point. Huh. Satan, Lucifer, his name, God showed me this last night, and I was like, Why, God, 
But his name, <laughs> Lucifer, is light bearer. Yes. So he's supposed to carry the light. Ah. But Lucifer's problem uh -huh. is that he didn't want to carry the light. He wanted to be the light. A lot of us don't want to carry the light. We want to be the light. We want to be the spotlight. We want to be the center of attention. We want to be the eye and the center of the nation. We want to be the image of what we think it should be. A lot of us don't even realize that we picked up the ways of Luciferian, Luciferianism. Everything about Luciferian, Luciferianism is about self. It's about get what you want, do what thou wilt. That's what it's about. And God is saying there is a psychological warfare where the enemy is trying to get my people to think it and to get tied into the image that the enemy has given them instead of the image that I have given you. And the image that I have given you is based on the knowledge of God. Yeah. See, we came in the world crisis. Christ is the light that entered the world, and we are called that he lighted every man. Christ is the light that we carry. Yes. So to be like him, we got to carry the light. Yes. We got to hold up the light. Hold we light. can't be the light. Right and that is my topic for today. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. We are victorious in this warfare. We are mighty in this warfare. We already got it. We already won in this warfare. But we got to use our weapons that are mighty through God. We got to see ourselves as God sees us. We got to hold up the image of Christ crucified and the glory and victory of Calvary and the resurrection power and the Holy Spirit power and the preaching unto all nations in the name of Jesus. God bless you.